Toward the end of last year, I was planning out new projects and experiments that I want to work on in 2026, and I realized that I just have way too many plants. I have been plant maxing. It didn't happen overnight, but just over time, the plants have multiplied exponentially, and I can't risk them gaining sentience and turning against me. So the thing about tissue culture is that if a protocol works, it really works. Suddenly one container of plants turns into five and then 20. And then all of a sudden you have a shelf full of clones of one plant that you started with. The problem for me is that space and time are finite, not like in a cosmic way, but every container of plants that I have to be maintaining and subculturing routinely is time that I can't spend on new projects, working on new things. And if I keep everything alive forever, nothing new will ever get made. So welcome to the video where I throw away most of my plants. Before we get into it, my name is Lore and I make videos about plant tissue culture. Tissue culture is a method of rapidly cloning plants and it works on pretty much any plant that you can think of and it's easy enough to do in your kitchen at home. If you too dream of making such a ridiculous amount of plants that you have to discard them on a public social media platform for accountability, then check out my website, plantsandjars.shop, where I sell a kit to make tissue culture media, which is the gel that the plants essentially multiply on. You'll see me making it a little bit later in this video. If you're interested in learning more, check out my website, plantsandjars.shop, and also check out the beginner tutorials that I'm going to link in the description below. First, we need some rules for what we're going to be keeping and what I'm going to trash. Rule number one is I can only keep one or two containers of each plant. No backups for the backups. Rule number two, if I haven't subcultured it in more than six months, it goes in the trash. Those plants have already been functionally abandoned by me anyways. I'm just the one refusing to accept it. Rule number three, if it doesn't support an active video, experiment, or project, then I'm not keeping it. I'm not running a plant retirement home here. There were some plants that I was tempted to break my own rules for. Some of these plants took months to establish successfully and others are just like, I think they're cool. But wanting to keep something is not a good enough reason to keep maintaining it indefinitely. Some of these plants have been growing in culture for going on three years now. Contrary to what people think online, you can actually keep plants in vitro or in TC for a very long time. A good example is agri-starts where they maintain their mother stock or their mother block in tissue culture pretty much indefinitely. These aren't short-term cultures, they're the plants that they use to generate clones from year after year. When I toured their facility, some of their plants had been in TC since like well before I was born. That's all to say that this lab cleanout isn't really about plants going bad or getting too old. Um, it's just me trying to be more intentional about what I keep. Just because I can keep something alive forever doesn't mean I should. Here's a before and after of the shelves. This is everything that I'm keeping. Almost all of it needs to imminently be subcultured, which means that the next step is going to be making media and transferring all the plants. For this clean out, I made one liter of philodendron media, one liter of begonia media, two liters of carnivorous plant media, one liter of African violet media, and half a liter of monstera media. If you're curious about the recipes I use for the different types of tissue culture medias, I have them all on my website, with the exception, I think, of the carnivorous plant one, so I'll put that up on the screen here. Carnivorous plants are really easy to grow and multiply in TC, which is why I have so many of them. You'll see when I do the transfers that I have like a ton of pingiculas and um, Venus flytraps. If you've watched my DIY TC tutorials that are designed to be followed at home, then the workflow that you see me doing right now might look a little bit different from that. At home, I usually pour the media directly into the media containers prior to sterilizing them in the pressure cooker, which acts as an autoclave to sterilize the media. In the lab, I sterilize the media in big two liter media bottles, and then I pour the media underneath the flow hood into the sterile containers. Both methods work. It's not a right or wrong thing. It's just two different workflows depending on the space and equipment that you have access to. Um, another small difference is how I handle the agar. 
Instead of adding it to the media after I adjust the pH, which is how I do it at home, I instead just add the agar directly to the media bottle and then pour the media basically on top of it. Everything's going to combine in the autoclave anyways when it's heated at high temperatures to sterilize it. This setup is just a little bit faster for me when I'm in the lab. And when you're making multiple liters at once, small workflow decisions start to matter a little bit more. Most plants ideally need to be subcultured every four weeks. Sometimes you can stretch that out to six or eight weeks, but in general, more frequent subculturing will give you better growth rates. Subculturing just means transferring the plants onto fresh tissue culture media. Over time, the nutrients in the media and the hormones will start to get depleted and lose efficacy. So we transfer the plants onto fresh media so that they can have more consistent access to the things that they need to be able to grow and multiply. Subculturing is also where the workload can start to add up if you have a lot of culture containers. I think that the question that I'll probably get asked the most on this video is why don't I just sell the plants instead of throwing them away? Good question. <laughs> um, the short answer is sometimes I do sell the plants. Before I even started filming this video, I did have a single buyer come and pick up probably a third of the total culture containers that I had in the laboratory. It was someone I knew already. I wouldn't just like invite some random person to the laboratory. In terms of like selling individual containers of plants B2C on a platform like Etsy or even my own website, to be honest, I just don't really have time. My Etsy store where I used to sell plants has been empty for a while now, but I actually used to sell plants full time before I got really into YouTube. Early on, I was importing the plants that I would sell, but then I think by like 2023, all of the plants in the store were plants that I had tissue cultured myself, which was really cool. I have a pre-recorded Q&A coming out soon, and one of the questions was about why I stopped selling plants, and I filmed it months ago, so hopefully I answered it well. But the short of it is just that I started to feel a really strong conflict of interest between making the videos and selling the plants. So when my YouTube channel started to gain a little bit of traction and I was getting more subscribers, I was still selling plants and that was how I basically made my whole income. On one hand, I was making really in-depth tutorials for how to do micropropagation. But then on the other hand, I felt like I was essentially training my own competitors and showing them exactly what I was doing to clone these like rare and expensive plants that I was working with. That tension made it hard to be fully transparent in the early tutorials and I think that any tutorial where information is being withheld is not going to be the best possible tutorial that it can be. So in 2024 I made a pretty intentional shift and I stopped selling plants and I started leaning fully into just doing social media full-time and then in 2025 I came out with the um, product line for plants and jars, which is tissue culture supplies, and I feel like that aligns a lot better with the tutorials than selling plants does. Sometimes I do miss selling plants. I really enjoy selling plants, to tell you the truth. So I'm thinking maybe in the future I'll do like a couple dedicated drops a year of like a plant that I find really cool. Anyways, I did all of those transfers in the flow hood that you're watching, but I am working on a part two of a video called tissue culture for dummies. Actually, I don't think it was called that. How to clone a plant at home, part two, where I only use a still air box to clone some African violets from start to finish. So for that series, the transfers all need to be done inside a still air box. So that is what I did. The goal of using the still air box is to show people that you don't need a ton of expensive equipment to get started with TC, which you definitely don't. I just want to show people that it actually does work. The upside of cleaning all this stuff out is that it makes room for what's next. This year, I'm excited to start working with a lot more food crops. I put out some feelers on Instagram to see what people wanted to see in terms of food crops, and the most popular, I believe, were blueberries, strawberries, and bananas a whole in vitro smoothie. I'm doing a lot of planning right now for those videos, so if you feel strongly about another food crop, let me know in the comments. 
I will add you to my pie chart. I also want to work with a lot more unicorn plants this year and test whether their mutations are stable in TC or not. Unicorn plant is not a scientific term, it's just what people call plants that feel almost impossible to get, usually because they're one of a kind due to a specific naturally occurring mutation that they'll have. The most common cold emails that I get are people sending me photos of their mutated plants asking if I can help clone them. Most of the time when people want me to clone a plant for them, it's usually like a monstera with sectoral variegation and I'll usually turn them down because that type of mutation is very unstable and all we're going to get out of cloning it is a bunch of green plants. But sometimes something genuinely interesting does come along. Another creator on YouTube, Planting Ashley, recently found a really cool mutated philodendron pink princess and she's been asexually propagating it by cuttings. She's calling it the peppermint princess because of the coloration of the mutation. I think it's the perfect name for that plant. If you've ever cut open a pink princess or any Erubescens stem, Usually the sap is pink and purple. This one is completely white inside with a pink center. It literally looks like a peppermint. So this year we're going to be propagating it through multiple generations asexually to test whether the mutation is stable or not. I'll obviously be doing that with tissue culture and she'll be doing it by taking cuttings, more traditional method, and we're going to document that process, which I'm really excited about. Another personal goal for me in 2026 is just to read more. 2025 was like a great year for me personally and professionally, but I barely read a book. I think in 2024 I read like almost 50 books and then in 2025 I set a goal of 12 because I knew I'd be busier and I think I read 10 total books. So this year I'm setting the same goal again, which is 12 books. Here's the first batch that I'm going to be starting with. I have not read any of these yet, so if they suck, it's not my fault. Um, if you want some guaranteed bangers for your reading list, here are some of my favorites from the last couple of years. Um, okay, now I'm literally just yapping, so thank you guys for being here and for making 2025 such a great year for me. I'm very excited about 2026 and the things that are coming, so I hope you stick around to see it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.